All right, so now let's go back to uh, why BFO is important. We've said already it has lots of users. It's, I think, by far the most widely reused ontology. I don't know of any competitor. Um, and it's used in a lot of different kinds of projects. It's very small and it's easy to learn, uh, we think. And it, but it can be applied in the same way to many different kinds of problem cases. I know that to be a fact because I have done it. But there are other candidate upper ontologies and it's, a, it's worthwhile to discuss briefly what makes BFO a better candidate than those other candidates. First of all, BFO is strictly domain neutral. It's a true top level ontology. So the words like role and function and disposition and, and spatial region can be applied in any domain. There are no restrictions. Now Dolce, uh, which means domain ontology for linguistic and cognitive engineering, is a top-level ontology which is very similar to BFO in many ways. They came out of the same Aristotelian background. So I was involved um, in some ways in influencing Dolce, and Dolce was involved in some ways in influencing BFO. Dolce contains some human-specific terms, so it contains terms like society, which BFO does not have. We have object aggregate, and then a society might be a kind of object aggregate. Uh, the big difference between BFO and Dolce, I believe, is, is the poor documentation of Dolce and the failure by Dolce to form hubs. So BFO has worked very hard to serve as the basis for hub spokes modular ontology suites. Dolce has not succeeded in doing that. There is one exception which is currently ongoing, which is a, uh, uh, the beginnings of a suite of ontologies for hydrology which looks to be of high quality. Uh, but otherwise, um, we, we don't have a track record on the part of Dolce. Sumo, it, of which I was also, in, uh, Sumo contains some of my ontology ideas also. Sumo stands for the suggested upper merged ontology. Merged means they took bits and pieces, for instance, from me, and p made an ontology out of them. It's now very big. It has many very nice features. The web. Uh, availability of Sumo has all kinds of uh, interesting things that you can do. Uh, there is a mapping from Sumo, uh, to, from Sumo to WordNet and back, so, and that's an a, a important feature of Sumo. However, although Sumo is, is claiming to be an upper ontology, it contains a lot of domain-specific terms. And the problem is that it has domain-specific terms which relate to specific disciplines like biology or physics, but it has terms in those domains which no biologist or physicist would ever use. And it defines them in ways which a biologist or physicist would be af afraid of. So it has terms like body covering or fruit or vegetable, one term. And this means that biologists can't use sumo. And that means that it's not a candidate for being a hub for a spokes system just because it's too big. It's eaten up too much in the domain level that it should have left to experts to develop rather than developing domain level content as if they were a top, a top level ontology uh, contribution. So this is a problem of what happens when ontology experts try to do biology. And then there's upper psych uh, which is very the 3,000 terms, so it's not really an up, a top-level ontology. And then there are various others. Um, uh, so Buffo and Dolce have the same upper-level structure to a large degree. Uh, both have been used a lot, and they have similar goals, but Dolce did not succeed in, uh, in, cre in creating suites, uh, in ter serving as the root of a suite. So but BFO and Dolce, I said, draw on the same Aristotelian background. This is the background. So we have particulars and universals. Particulars are me and you, or your headache and my headache. And universals are man and headache. And that's called the ontological square. Sumo only has two of those boxes. Sumo only has individuals such as man and then what it calls attributes or predicates. 
such as being red or being a square. So sumo has problems with headaches. There's nowhere where headaches can go in sumo. Sumo just says, instantiates, has, the predicate has headache. But there's no entity which is a headache in sumo. So sumo would not be good for, as a medical ontology. And then psych uh, is like Dolce. It's rooted in common sense, where BFO tries to be rooted in science. Uh, the problem with psych is that it doesn't think that ontology should be consistent with each other. And its argument is that common sense itself is not consistent. And so it contains things like this. Uh, the, the immaculate conception is the conceiving something biological reproduction event in which Mary, mother of Jesus, was conceived. I don't think terms like that belong in an ontology so because it's not a universal and you should keep your universals, however, and your instances separate. He did a, a review of different upper-level ontologies. Um, this was for the industrial um, context. So BFO and Dolce all are small, open, and they're all pretty much top-level ontologies. Uh, BFO has what we think is pretty good user documentation. and The book is a, a piece of user documentation as we see it and also what we think is pretty good techni technical comp documentation. Dolce doesn't really have good user documentation, in part because it doesn't really have this effort to provide services to users so that they can create conformant domain ontologies. Then we have external community support, and again, um, Dolce provides external community support to the people who use Dolce in the sense they develop domain ontologies from Dolce. In other words, it provides support for technical people, but it doesn't provide any support for people who want to use those ontologies and get things done. There are ontologies using Dolce in the legal realm, for instance. But they've been published as papers. Because there's no user support, those ontologies died. No one ever used them and developed them and applied them more generally. And then axiomatization. So both Dol but BFO and Dolce now have uh, axiomatizations in OWL and common logic. No other ontology on this list has both of those things. Uh, they both have natural language definitions. Sumo has natural language definitions also, which are mostly good, but they're sometimes really bad. BFO does not have a word net mapping. There is someone who has worked out how to build it, but she hasn't actually done, uh, done the mapping yet. And Dolce and Sumo win on that front. And then, but BFO, actually, I would say now, having done some more work on BFO, uh, on Dolce, that Dolce is also stable, uh, but that's in a sad way. It hasn't, so the main first order logic axiomatization of Dolce has not changed since 2002. And even though they've recognized through the years that there are things which could be improved, they haven't improved the ontology. Rather, they, there have been split-offs. So groups of Dolce ontology developers have created Dolce Lite, Dolce Upper Lite, Dolce Upper Lite version 2, Dolce Upper Lite version 3.39. I believe that there are more than 300 versions of Dolce, but the one original version, which is the official version, has been stable. And then BFO has an explicit license which Dolce didn't get.